I am always baffled that people say we don't know anything about the Druids because we have no written records or that everything was burnt in the Library of Alexandria, aside from the Druidic doctrine of metempsychosis and the works of Godfrey Higgins. There are a variety of words we use daily, as well as supposed works of fiction and fantasy that are a direct cause of the Druids. You will find evidence by way of runic manuscripts and the study of language. The oldest accounts of the Druids are preserved in stone with the Pictish runes. These are perhaps the best examples of rune calligraphy because they are very elegant spiral patterns. These spiral shapes have their origin from Greek and Egyptian calligraphy, most likely being from Serapis, an intertwined snake symbol, which was uniquely utilized to connect the Greeks to the Egyptians. It is, of course, inspired by the Caduceus, or Staff of Hermes. The phi symbol was also used in Archaic Greek and is the equivalent to the letter F, or the TH or PH sound. Phi is also known as the Golden Ratio, which is an essential component when building structures to calculate the distance between pillars. The Triskelion is another spiral-like symbol, which can be traced back to the Picts and is a tenant for the recently extinct language of Manx from the Island of Man, named after the Celtic figure Mananan MacLear. The oldest European runes are from the Alm runic alphabet, which is the most complete runic alphabet, where we get the Greek Omphalus or the Sanskrit Lingam. This alphabet was inspired in large by the Chinese I Chang, known as the Book of Changes, as I've covered in a previous video. Historians, of course, have a tendency of moving the goalpost and not addressing these origins because they are protecting the narrative of Judeo-Christianity. It was not Columbus that discovered America, nor was it Eric the Red, but more older than that is the Iris St. Brendan. The oldest manuscripts we have about the exploration of Greenland, Iceland, and the Americas comes from the tale of St. Brendan and the Codex Flatryerbach. The oldest Icelandic manuscript which describes the voyage and the Grolandinga saga, or Greenland saga. Greenland was most likely what the Greek scholars studying the philosophers speculated was known as the continent of Hyperborea. However, eventually historians will move the goalpost again because ancient Egyptians had visited the New World because some mummies have been found buried with tobacco, among other things, which is impossible to be found on the African and European continent. The tale of St. Brendan and the Whale is reminiscent of the tale of Jonas and the Whale in the Bible. I've covered on my video about Karen Stones and the Druidic Doctrine of Metempsychosis that this story is an allegory for initiation. The most modern example of this story is by Freemason Carlo Collodi, who wrote Pinocchio, about a boy made from wood, which is perhaps a reference to Arrain, or the Germanic word for mandrake, which traces its origins through engravings of the runic inscription Alu. The blue fairy in Pinocchio is a reference to the star Sirius, and I'll also We'll leave a link in the description for more info. The language of the Druids was similar to that of the Cathars who inhabited southern France. Historians are accurate, at least when they say that a lot of the surviving text no longer exists due to the Christian whitewashing agenda of runic inscriptions. Take, for instance, the Orkhon runes or the Old Turkish script which resembles that of the Elder Futhark, demonstrating the spread of the Proto-Indo-European language through runes. The majority of these cultures were assimilated due to the Latinization of their language. For instance, the Bonnets manuscripts 
is perhaps the best example of old Turkish script being converted into a Latin form of writing, which took historians years to figure out. This was most likely a botanical document passed down by way of word of women who were condemned for witchcraft. It is also speculated this document was of Cathar origin, although there is only folklore and linguistic evidence to back this up. There have been numerous genocides in the guise of Crusades in the region of France, such as the Albigensian Crusade against the Cathars, as well as the Lithuanian Crusade, which rid Europe of the last vestiges of pagan cultures that fled from the Grail country. Lithuania has the oldest surviving European language that most closely resembles ancient Sanskrit, the language of the Druids being that of Gaulish, with the closest surviving languages being that of Manx and Scottish Gaelic. The most used word we use today is the word car, which came from the Gaulish word "carros" for a wheeled cart. The Portuguese language is also a language heavily inspired by the Gaelic dialect, being bastardized by Latin, the very word Portugal implies the port of Gaul. The Cathars spoke a language which was known as Occitan. This was a mixture of Latin, Gallic, Spanish, and Italian. The troubadours in particular spoke a slight variation known as Provençal. Both of these languages were highly influential on Old French. The most widely used word in our vocabulary today comes from troubadours, or entertainers, or the word bard in Celtic, or muses in Greek. The word cabin is of Provençal origin, from the word cabane, or the more Spanish and Italian variant, cabana, where we get the word cabaret from, which again has to do with the entertainment factor. This aspect was considered taboo after the Crusades and Anglo-Norman invasions, and the words prim and proper took on very different meaning, which was more like cringe and awkward. And you still hear these words used today, the word proper more so in British slang. However, the words cringe and awkward have more so to do with pagan converts to Christianity and entertainers such as Shakespeare, who is accredited to having translated the first Latin version of the Bible into Old English. But that's all for now. Check the links in the description.